So, on the eve of Sherilyn leaving, I have some thoughts. I don't know what they are yet, but I'm just going to, you know, make them up as I go along. Uh, she's been here a year, and she was here before, so she knew where she was coming back to, and she knew that she was coming back to a place with an injured Brian. So, uh, so she was up for some adventure, I guess. Uh, the pandemic was just coming on. And so, uh, she didn't know what would happen with that either. And, you know, I have my guesses, and my guesses so far are mostly right. But she got to stay in Aranga because a really cool name, guy named Rosendo uh, offered her his house, like as a donation, a house for uh, an, unknown, an unknown time, but it turned out being about a month. And uh, she visited me, of course, in my bed in my little town, uh, spot in town and stuff. And then uh, she helped me move up here, which was kind of, you know, it's an actual thing with a guy who can't be functional. It really sucked. Um, nah, it didn't suck that much. It was all right. Uh, everybody was really nice and everything worked out okay. And uh, and the the small tools that people gave me, like the walker and the sticks, and now the cane is just amazingly awesome. So as the time that she's leaving me, right, as I prepare for that time, I actually feel somewhat confident that I can be okay. Uh, food's going to change a lot because her food was so awesome. Uh, she makes the best food in the world. It fits with my values, which is, you know, with me for food. I don't start with taste. I start with values. And then I go to convenience, <laughs> you know, and less labor and efficiency. I guess that's all part of the same thing. But, you know, taste is pretty low on the list for me. But it was tasty food, and it was all vegan food. Uh, I think... The only time she made anything with meat was when there was leftover chicken from the times we went into town and we got chicken there. So, uh, oh, and there was eggs from the chickens here. So there's only a couple chickens, but. Um, so overall, I mean, you know, if I was gonna review this person, I'm not sure that's the point of this video, but what the fuck, why not? Uh, I would recommend her. I would recommend Sherilyn Sunflower as a caretaker person or a person in a business with plants. She's a really good with plants. Um, you know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm very into plant reproduction. And um, you just got to understand what the plants want and do what they want. That's, that's it. It's very easy, actually. But then there's a bunch of work you got to do to move water around and dirt and and just care for the plants and so she has a very good plant sensibility and so I trust her on that level greatly um, I don't just trust her like I want her to mess with my plants so uh, I would recommend her highly in that regard um, she did well here uh, I think emotionally you know this is a hard place to be which is one other person uh, before there were some other people and there were some difficulties and things happen with you know all personalities that try and interact uh, but you know we just all got to do the best we can do and then learn from it and be better and uh, so you know we set up our own boundaries and uh, uh, we weren't lovers uh, if anyone was interested in being a lover with me, I don't know if that matters, but yeah, actually, it's not your business. Um, but some people did assume we were a couple, and I really don't appreciate that, actually. I think that's really stupid um, that, you know, just because a dude and a chick are in the same location that they're doing each other. It's not true. I have had many female friends that I have not done, and some of whom I should have, but... Um, you know, in this case, uh, you know, it was just, it worked out as a, as a uh, trade for a year where she took care of me in some very difficult times, which I really do appreciate. And uh, she took care of plants and uh, I was hopefully somewhat amusing and I also did things that helped her have a deeper time here and learn some things. Although a lot of it's been tough, like a lot of it's been, um, 
you know, time alone. And luckily, and that's actually a nice thing about her, is luckily she's cool with that. Because there's a lot of people, you got to babysit them all the time, you know, they always need something. And I'm probably more like that than she is. She's probably more cool with being alone than I am. Um, we did talk a couple times a day, and uh, I used her to help me solve problems, you know, by brainstorming ideas and things. Uh, and then we, we drove around quite a bit. She has a really nice car. And uh, so even though we didn't get to do, and, 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 you know, I always want people to have the ideal experience here. So I ideally wanted to support her in doing these touristy things and maybe even go with her and just see all of Michoacan because it's such a great state with such many beautiful places, many of which are not popular. They're not very well known. They're just known locally. It's not a big um, destination state for tourism for Mexicans and, or anybody. And it's got just such great places. So eventually I'd like to go to all of them, of course. I haven't finished exploring the state I did the coast, and I did other things, and I, you know, explored some. But unfortunately, she was not able to accomplish the goal of, uh, like, uh, seeing a bunch of really cool touristy places. That's okay, though. We did a tiny bit of it. It was just a tiny taste, and she bought some things, gifts for her friends, because she's going back, you know. And uh, so it was all right. And then... Um, I've gotten more functional physically, which has been great. So I don't need, like, you know, a nurse caring for me all the time. Uh, and in fact, she's never had to care for me in that way much, I don't think at all. You know, I've had her, like, fill my water pitcher and move water around and feed dogs. I'm now going to feed the dogs. I didn't before. So she actually did huge amounts of things that, that mattered and made the place better. But um, now I'm at this state where tomorrow morning she's going to leave and that's okay too. Uh, and she's gonna go on to her new adventures. Uh, she's got lots of great stuff to do and I hope her drive goes well, of course. It, it probably will. Uh, I'm a little, I, I'm not gonna say scared. You know, I, I can handle this. Um, things are heavy. Things are slow. Uh, I got, you know, a lot of difficulties to face here um, and not a lot of backup, but you know what? <laughs> I've been here since 2004 and I've gone through times of really harsh uh, like stuff that most people wouldn't want to deal with. And uh, as long as I don't fall down, I was walking down the stairs over there and I didn't pay attention for a second on the very bottom of the stairs even. It's like the thirty percent left you know to go or something, and i I don't know if I looked over or something, but I stumbled suddenly, and it scared the hell out of me. Um, I'm a very confident, strong person. I you know do things and and people even do what I say because what I have to say is usually really awesome. so uh, but the fact that I almost stumbled and fell was scary. You know, like that's like I can just make one small mistake and have an injury that I could die there, which actually sounds like the best option. And believe me, I have thought about that and I like the idea. But laying at the end of stairs for a while with brokenness, like I've already had enough brokenness. So there are issues here, um, you know, and so I think about having other people here. Uh, and I gotta do that. That is something I have to do, but I do it very carefully. So, so much of what is offered is not what I want, and um, I'd rather be alone than with most people. So, yeah, it's not the ideal, but it's nice when stuff comes out of your teeth and you can eat it. Let's talk about you for a moment.
you know, I uh, all the, a lot of things I publish. And I don't know who will see this or who saw the last part or if I'll break it up or what. But a lot of people I feel like are confused, upset. Many of them are ignorant. I hope you're not one. But I also feel like people call people ignorant when they're not. You know, they're just making choices based on their values. And so I find that a really weak insult, actually. I've been called ignorant every time I didn't agree with somebody, you know, about their fascist bullshit and asshole rules. So, I don't know. My advice to you, I don't know you, would be to take an inventory of your life, if you haven't, which I apologize for being an asshole for, for suggesting it, if you have. But, uh... Like all the parts of your life, like where do you sleep? Are you comfortable? Are you sleeping well? Are you getting hydrated? Are you eating okay? Are you eating healthy food or crap? You know, how's your financial situation going and how, you're, how are you developing your skill set? You know, uh, what are your friends' relationships like in your social world? Uh, should you remove people from your life or should, should you seek out other kinds of people? Uh, where are you at in your life? Are you young? Are you mid? Are you old? Or whatever. And uh, especially if you're young, I think I have. I think I have great advice for people who are young. Um, and I should probably formulate that better, like write it up really well, because it doesn't. It's very tricky. You know, not any piece of advice applies to anyone. And I, I when I was younger, I was very offended. Well, kind of offended, or just tuned them out of like people who told me what I should do. Nobody, nobody knows. God, fuck. Nobody knows what I should do, okay? And only you know what you should do. I know what I should do very well, actually. I've thought about it for years and years, and I've had a lot of experience. And so when you're younger, uh, a lot of people are very happy to tell you what you should do. And you're tempted to believe them because they're older. Maybe you are. Or you're tempted to reject them because they're older. And either one of those paths is a dumbass plan. Like, you should kind of listen to everything. A lot, actually. And you should read everything. I know some people aren't into that, but, well, good luck. You're never going to really understand what's going on. Uh, So, you know... Ultimately, it's you. It's your, it's your design of your life, and um, regardless of you know what you think of what I'm saying or what anybody else says, it's your life that you're going to lead, and you should have the freedom to do that. You should have the ability to to take actions that you wish that don't hurt other people. This is the kind of non-aggression principle, right? Which is a very tricky principle. Like, don't hurt other people, and then you can do what you want great general rule set Um, unfortunately a lot of people claim that when other people do something they don't like that they're hurting them and uh, they even claim that if you don't pay them you know your salary and and your labor if you don't give them their cut that you're hurting them and you're hurting society and it's not true they will steal everything from you that they can they will do it over and over for generations. They will enslave your people. That's them, and you're you. So, uh, I don't know, fucking. There's like bugs falling off the ceiling lately. Oh, there's one right there above my head. There's one right there. And these bugs have been falling off the ceiling on, my, on me for three nights now. I moved up here kind of recently. And I think they're attracted by the lights. And I can't tell if they're coming from the outside. I don't know what's going on. And you know what? i just going to deal with it. Because there's nothing I can do, do about it. I do kill them if they fall on me. I kill them and I throw them over to bed. Uh, and, you know, I got bigger fish to fry than that crap. But I would rather they not do that. Especially that one right there. It's right above my head. And it's gonna fall right on my head. <sighs> oh well. Well, 
This is the point in the video where I either add another enlightening point or I wander along. I think my last thought was that I hope you're doing well. And I don't like to talk a lot about other people, what they should do. I really spend very little time on that, you'll notice. Although, of course, a lot of people take what I say very personally and as an insult or direction that they should reject. But, you know, I barely ever tell anyone what to do. I am on my trip doing what I want to do. I'm not sure if I always want to do it lately. But a very hard trip, you know. It's like harder than... It's hard. And so you're on your trip. And uh, you have a totally different problem set than me, which is cool. You know, I, we all just got different problem sets. And mine feels to me often horrible and difficult, and I just want to give up all the time. Um, and I know that there's a lot of other people like that out there. And don't idealize my setup. Some people are like, oh, you're... Yeah, yeah. That was not very coherent, but... Uh, you know, they're like all like, oh, you live in the forest and it's all great and you just prance around and everything's wonderful. And it's like, that is so not even the case at all. You know, I living here is extremely difficult and, and the goals I have are extremely lofty and strange and, and so it's the hardest thing that I can imagine to live here, actually. And yet, when I think about anywhere else to live, I can't live there. I, I gotta be here and do the thing I gotta do. And so wherever you're at, I know that you got problems, right? It's impossible not to. You got family issues, friend issues, financial issues, housing issues. Uh, we all deal with this stuff, however we have to. And so I wish you luck and I hope that you think about what values you live by and how you can serve the community where you're at at large because it really, I mean, I can't advise you on your individual situation in any way. You know what's going on. You know better than anyone else. You're on the ground. But you can expand your view beyond yourself. That's really important. You know, to be childish is, is to be selfish. To be adolescent is to be selfish. And, but to grow up and serve other people, that is what matters. And that's true of, uh, you know, some island somewhere, uh, somewhere in India, somewhere in China, uh, somewhere back in Seattle where my friends are. I got friends and they're still dealing with stuff. And, you know, I don't know what all of it is. I used to have people come over to my house and, and they would talk to me about their real issues, you know. And I talked to a lot of people. And... Largely, they talked to me. I listened more than I talked. But I always, of course, added my views. And my views are, you know, that they should do well with the, where they're at with the values they got. And it's just tricky stuff all around. And so when I think about anyone anywhere in the world who's listening to this, my values, my views um, are all adjustable to where you're at. Um, they have a lot to do with conservation. I don't expect the poorest people in the world to conserve much. In fact, I would like them to use more energy. I would like them to use it to best benefit. You know, and have LED lights in their house and so their kids can read at night. And I like them to have cell phone access, you know, because smartphones are all smart and stuff. Um, and my, my primary message, if I was going to be concerned about anyone in the world, is actually my own friends and my own sort of pseudo cohort, you know. The fancy people I know that travel around a lot, and I know they're just going to keep doing that. That's okay, and I would love it if they made some effort to make a better world. Um, and I know some of it matters more than other parts and everything, but um, my friends are the people. If you have that graph thing, that there's a funnel graph thing that shows that like 10% of the world's using 50% of the energy. Well, my friends are those 10%. I'm not. I'm doing really well. Um, I'm actually trying to develop how you can live like an emperor of sorts 
but with almost no energy. Live like an emperor is probably not going to happen. That's really not my deal. But um, at least I can live comfortably, you know? And I can live on 5% of the energy my friends live on. Seriously. But these this set of solutions is not going to work for them. They got jobs, they got kids. Um, so it's impossible at the moment. But, you know, I'll just keep working on doing the project I'm doing. And uh, they keep doing what they're doing. Um, I miss the Seattle social scene that was uh, largely centered on me at the time. I mean, I visited others, but I had my own little blob of people that um, had some comfort being around me, and uh, I would tend to call those people friends. I don't know. Some of them probably don't call me that, but uh, that's all right. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, some of them I never went to their house anyway, but but they're just people that seem nice, I guess, people with a sparkle in their eye and, and really a sparkle in their soul. So I miss those people so much, and uh, now I'm just going to hang out here and be alone more again and that's okay I gotta get strong my body is um, not not ready for the task but um, as long as I can not fall over and stuff and, and I can take care of the dogs and I don't know I just don't know what's gonna happen at all I have no idea it's the most confusing time there ever has been in my life and uh It's honest to me to post this crap online, I guess. Because I think a lot of people, they want to, you know, only show, like, the strong side. Like, that they're, they're so great and everything. And, and I am really great and everything. So, I definitely am I'm showing you that, too. Believe me. But, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not impressed with my recovery. I, I wish I could have been, like, a cooler guy who recovered all magically fast and shit. But I'm not. I'm just doing what I can do, and, you know, I got my own issues, and, and I do write a lot of things, and so if you want to read about those, you can, and, and I've made videos when I could, but, no, I'm not impressed at all with my um, overall uh, recovery, uh, you know, I have excuses, like, you know, I don't got physical therapy, you know, I don't got doctor or anything, although I don't think they know anything anyway, that's not true. The surgeon was awesome, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm super happy on this strange evening of uh, going back into aloneness. Uh, I have a little bit of wine to celebrate my new status, There's my wine. And, uh, Last thoughts on you? I don't know, man. Chick, whatever. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, one of the reasons I share these things is because I feel like I'm, I'm presenting an honest view of my world. And, and I think that's really rare. And I hope it helps you because I know so many people like the people I visit uh, new in Seattle. And um, I miss them. And I wonder how they're doing. And I know that they have struggles. And I know they have struggles that they don't talk to me about because I'm not that kind of friend, you know? So. Uh, and it's far away. And I was offline for a long time. So I don't know who my friends are. If you're my friend, let me know. Maybe I'll care. But maybe I won't. I don't know. Art. Arts, uh, you know, I could have done better. Should I? Should I? Should I, my friend? I don't know. I'm just kind of going along, really, day by day. It's very day by day. I talked about the inventory. Did you hear me? Inventory, life inventory of what you're doing with your life and where the energy comes in and out. So, 
Um, I wouldn't encourage anyone to be like me. I'm taking a very hardcore path that may lead to um, not what most people would want, but you can easily play the game, and you can play games all you want. You'll benefit. But which games do you want to play? I'll play my own game. In most cases, you should probably play the game that helps you survive the best. And if you're in the U.S., you should, you know, play into the, you know, imperialist society of of uh, fake money and um, consumerism and religion and whatever group you're in, you know. Maybe a company. A company. That's like a religion, really. And they pay you well. I was paid well by a company. So, I don't know. Well, it's almost a half hour clip. Hmm. And what have we really talked about? What does it really matter? It does matter. Because we're not done yet, you know? Humanity isn't totally collapsed yet. Civilization is likely to collapse. And, and that's something you should think about quite a bit. Because um, if, if you have offspring and things and all that, like where you want to live, and how you want to grow your food or something, um, there is a new culture we could create. And I have a lot of thoughts about that that I don't publish publicly. So if you are interested in that, you let me know. And uh, if you are already showing progress on creating a better world, if you're already changing your life, and, and if you, we already share values, then we can talk more. If you don't do that, then I don't think that I care about your life that much. And I hope you do well, but... I have very strong opinions about how we should live in terms of conservation and living. I mean, I could put this in old religious terms or, or something, you know, it's just bullshit. You know, like, I mean, you could take a vow of poverty. Is that a good idea? I don't recommend it. I essentially have taken a vow of poverty. That's what I've done. I have thrown myself in the mercy of the world and guess what? The world doesn't give a shit about me. I'd make more money sitting on the street begging than I would here uh, with my meager online earnings for what I do. And I'm trying to do the best I can. So it's a little frustrating. But So I don't recommend that anyone uh, follow my path in any way. I would recommend that they make as much money as they can off the industrial world. They make as much money in Europe and the United States or in China or whatever, in their positions that they're in, that they suck all the money out of that system. Please do. You're going to need it. Now, money, cash itself, doesn't have a lot of value because any time massive inflation could destroy all of that money, and it will. What do you do? You're going to buy some gold and silver? Well, maybe. Buy real estate? I mean, you could look up, like, you know, what, what investments are hedged against inflation? Because the U.S. dollar could fall, right? It's very likely to do that. And so, I don't know. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure I'm talking to anyway. I would give you different advice based on your values. Uh, most of the people who are listening to this, of course, will be in the United States, and they will stay in the United States, and they'll ride out whatever bullshit hits the fan. Um, but I would recommend that you um, dig in and prepare for more, more bullshit hits the fan, because bullshit always hits the fan, and it hits it harder than ways you want. Uh, we have been living in a bubble of prosperity uh, based on a variety of things, uh, and so, you know, and I live in my own bubble. I know nothing. Fucking physics doesn't even barely apply to me. 
except if I fall off a roof and it applies extremely effectively. Uh, so, you know, I, but mentally, like, you know, I just do what I want to do. And so, like, I could give a really goofy little example and I'm not gonna, but other people think that things matter that don't matter at all. Like, they're fucking slaves all the time to what they think matters. And almost none of it does. It really doesn't. So, I have actually done a great job at escaping from a lot of that. Um, I would like to, well, maybe, I'm not sure, get more involved in that again. I mean, I've been thinking about, like, you know, relationships and things. and Not a big fan, really, you know? Like... I'm pretty wary. Well, anyway, so that was that video. And uh, maybe I'll up to upload this one before I do the other ones. I don't know. I got a ton of videos I'm way back logged on on crazy ass crap I'm talking about while I'm walking around. Ideally, it should all be edited. I could just upload all of it. And then somebody might edit it someday or care about it or there could be clips of it. I don't know anything about that. But um, I can't deal with uh, so much video. I have had someone here to talk to for the last year, and that's been really nice. Um, but um, now you're my friend and my camera. So I'm talking to you, invisible person, tiny people in the camera, lots of them. And so... I might do more of these, but why? What do they serve? I don't know. I really don't know what my life serves. I just know I'm protecting a forest. I'm doing innovative things to improve the forest and the human interaction with it. And I think maybe that's enough for me. I think that's like, if I can succeed at that, if I can have other people learn from the idea, those set of ideas, you know, kind of like uh, Manasoba Fukuoka or whatever his name is, uh, one straw revolution guy. Like, if I can just have some ideas that are good, then that's good. I, I made my contribution, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'll just try and hang in there one more day. Another day after that. Uh, my internet goes off at the end of the month. I got no money to pay it. Yeah, the situations I'm dealing with are not really that ideal and uh you know what in some sense maybe i don't give a shit at the moment i've been drinking a little bit drinking some red wine and it's almost encouraging to remember nothing really matters at all maybe it's different if you have kids i don't kids but it just doesn't matter. And it's a really kind of depressing idea that most people don't think it matters. It's probably like one of the more horrible ideas that um, like we just continue to consume and pollute the earth. And, you know, people look to the government to fix it. They can't fix anything. They can't fix anything. If a government tried to fix consumerism, they would get overthrown immediately. So they're useless, okay? They're out. You could, as a citizen, try and get control over the military and the government as polluters. You could attack them as polluters. That would be awesome because they're the biggest polluters that there are because they don't have to care. They're above the law. And in many cases, they're actually illegal. So... The challenges we all face in different countries, of course, very different. I, I'm sorry for being U.S. focused in a lot of my views, but that's where I come from, and so I have other thoughts on Mexico. But really, you know, all of us need to think worldwide about what we're doing. So, uh, but definitely the biggest consumers are that 10% consuming the 50%. Um, those are the people I want to evangelize to and insult a little bit, which is. Everybody I know, probably, most people watching this, you know, it's kind of not a good place to end it, is it? That's not very polite. I'm sure you're a wonderful person. 
Yeah, you are. Could be. So, anyway, I got my own views. So, that's it for me. I'm out. I'm so tired. I'm, my legs are killing me. And uh, I fed only the dogs I could find. I'm trying to learn how to run my life out off the grid and shit. And, uh, why would somebody still be listening to this rambling thing? I'm just rambling on now. It's the end. Past the end. Huh. Maybe, uh, maybe you're a cute chick that likes me. That'd be cool. Maybe. But, don't flirt with me in any mean way. I don't think it. No expectations and shit. Um... One nice thing is that winter's over, and so it's actually not cold. In winter here in this building, it's really cold because it's not designed for anything good at all. Um, but I can actually just sit here. I'm in my boxers and uh, enjoying a moment of things being okay. You know, with fear for tomorrow and the next day and the next day. But no matter. Even though there is fear, we go on. Good luck with your life that I don't know about, but be strong, be kind, and uh, we'll see what happens.